Hi, my name is Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would do some horror book recommendations for you. So, spooky season is soon upon us. Um, so I have 10 books here, all of which I have very much enjoyed that I wanted to recommend to you. So we've got some contemporary novels, some more classic horror novels, some books with sci-fi elements and even a couple of books for younger readers as well. So we'll start off with the more um, contemporary novels and first up is a book that was only published this year and it's one of my favourite books of the year so far, Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield. This is a sort of an understated um, horror novel but there are definitely some creepy elements to it which is why I wanted to include it on this list. We follow a married couple, two women, and one of them has recently returned from a deep sea mission which has in some way gone wrong. When she returns home her wife feels like she's somehow different and it's really about the relationship between these two women and how things have changed since the wife has returned from the mission. It is quite, um, it's fairly slow paced. There is sort of a creeping dread about it, which I really liked. Um, and I thought the ending was brilliant. Next book I want to recommend is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. So I read this last year. And our main character is called Noemi and she gets a, a letter from her cousin who's recently been, mar been married asking her to go see her because she is in some sort of trouble. So Noemi goes to uh, stay with the cousin who lives in this like old mansion style house. There's lots of gothic tropes going on in this book which I very much enjoyed. What I particularly liked about this book is are the descriptions which we get as we get further on into the story which are very sort of visceral and gross um, and just really really enjoyable. This is quite a sensationalist sort of novel as well I would say. Next some more sort of classic horror Rosemary's Baby by Ira Levin. I should say many of these books have been made into films none of which I have actually seen. Um, so Rosemary's Baby, we have a married couple who move into a new apartment building and Rosemary becomes pregnant, as the title would suggest. Um, and their neighbours are all sort of acting a bit weird. I really, really liked it. I thought it was um, creepy and kind of a lot of fun as well. Next, we had to have some Shirley Jackson on this list. This is The Haunting of Hill House. Um, so uh, we follow a, uh, a doctor who is investigating like the paranormal and supernatural stuff. And he goes to do some experiments in Hill House. And he takes with him two or three people who he has recruited to help him with this. I really, really like Shirley Jackson's writing. She does Creeping Dread, I think, better than anyone else. There's some interesting um, sort of writing styles going on in this book. I've read a few Shirley Jacksons now. Controversially, I read We Have Always Lived in the Castle and I didn't really like it. That was a few years ago, so I can't really remember why I didn't like it, but I'll have to revisit that at some point. But this one I very much enjoyed. Next up, The Midwich Cuckoos by John Wyndham. This is my favourite John Wyndham that I've read so far. So this is set in the village of Midwich and one day this mysterious silver object appears in the sky um, and the next day all the women find out that they are pregnant. So this was made into the film A Village of the Damned. It contains a lot of creepy children who are acting very strangely. I really really like the central sort of premise of this book which I won't go too much into because I think that would be a spoiler um, but I think it's I find it really really fascinating um, and it's one that I would very much recommend. Next is The Body Snatchers by Jack Finney which I read last year. So this is about a town where people sort of start to act a bit strange. So it starts off with a woman who goes to a doctor's office because I think her uncle, her uncle, 
looks the same as he always did, but there's something about him that she knows that he isn't really her uncle. And then this starts to happen right across the uh, the town or the village. Um, and we go on from there. I really, really enjoyed this book more than I was expecting to because there's just so much going on in here that I wasn't expecting. I really like the ending of this book as well. This has been made into, I think, four different films, which I think in some way have all sort of slightly changed the ending. I personally like the ending of the book. Next is Under the Skin by Michelle Faber. This is a book that I read several years ago and absolutely loved. I mean, you can't, you probably can't see that um, cover at all. Um, so this is about a woman who is driving around and picking up hitchhikers. The hitchhikers are all young men who were all of a similar ilk. This was made into a film starring Scarlett Johansson, which I have not seen, but from what I hear, it's utterly terrible and quite different to the book. So if you have heard of that film and how awful it is, I'd say don't let that put you off from giving the book a go. Next is The Vanishing by Tim Crabbe. This is a Dutch novel originally published as The Golden Egg. Now this is more of a thriller, but I wanted to include it on this list because I think it's really, really creepy. So in The Vanishing, we follow a young couple who are driving through France and they stop at a gas station and I think he is like filling up the tank. She goes into the station to buy some drinks or something and then she never comes out again. There's no sign of her. She's completely disappeared. And then we jump forward a few years and we follow the guy who understandably has never got over this. Um, no one has been able to work out what happened to his girlfriend. The police had no leads. She just disappeared. He never knew what happened to her. Um, and so he, we follow him, you know, still trying to find out what on earth could have happened to her. You know, who's taken her away from him. Um, out of all the books on this list, this is, I think, the most realist of all of them. Many of these books have some sort of supernatural elements, but this one doesn't. Um, which I think sort of makes it all the more horrifying. Um... This was made into two films. It was made into a Dutch film and also Hollywood did a remake, which apparently was terrible because they totally changed the ending. I don't know why they do this. Um, but yeah, this is a really creepy, quite devastating and quite a bleak book as well. So let's finish off with two books for younger readers. And I wanted to include these because I read these both as an adult but they're two of the creepiest books <clears throat> I've ever read. So the first is one that you will have heard of before. The second, I think, is slightly less well known. First is Coraline by Neil Gaiman, um, which I read a few years ago. And I was really surprised by how creepy it is. Um, so our main character is Coraline, a young girl who moves house with her mother and father. And in this new house, she finds like a secret doorway um, which she eventually goes through and it takes her to this other world and there there is an other mother and an other father who I think look like her mother and father but have buttons for eyes. I just found this book really freaky um, and I I'd, obviously I knew I kind of knew of it because of popular culture because of the the film and so on which I haven't seen um, but I was surprised by how creepy it is and then finally I wanted to finish with Thorn Hill by Pam Smy. Out of all of the books on this list I think this is probably my favourite and the one that stayed with me the most. So it's told in two parallel narratives. The present day narrative is told in picture form and we follow a young girl who, who has just moved to a new house, which seems to be a theme in many of these books. Um, so she's moved to a new house with her father. And the house is located ne right next door to an old disused orphanage. Um, and this girl spends quite a lot of time by herself in the house because her dad is away at work. Um, and she can look through her bedroom window straight onto the orphanage. And weird stuff starts happening. The second narrative that we have going on at the same time is told in diary format by a young girl who used to live in the orphanage many, many years ago. And through the diary, we find out uh, what her life was like living in the orphanage. 
This is such a creepy book, but it's so brilliant. I love the ending of this book in particular. It's just brilliant. Um, and it's really stayed with me. Um, and I would highly recommend it. So those are my sort of quick horror recommendations for you. Let me know if you have read any of them, if you've got any thoughts. And also do let me know if you've got any recommendations for me. I have got quite a stack of books that I'm planning on reading for spooky season this year, but I'm always on the lookout for more recommendations. And if you recommend me something that I can get from the library, I will read it. So thank you for watching. I hope you well, and I'll speak to you again very soon. Bye.